What's up mga kabadi? For my first and today's vlog, we are tasked to make a content about the scope and responsibilities of forensic chemistry. And this might be my last vlog also. <laughs> I'll try to make this video as entertaining as possible, so you should watch it until the end! Please subscribe to this channel. Let's start in 3, 2, 1. I'm Eliza M. Perlado, and this is Jeder Pinagod, and lastly, Frank Jo Piedopo! We are third year criminology students in Olivares College, Tagaytay City! This video is part of our new normal education, and so far, so good. Do you know what chemistry is? According to Nature Research, it's about composition, structure, and properties of matter, like known as central science. It's also about atomic and molecular structure, changes, and reactions. Moving on, I'll share to you this principle of Lockhart. Hardened Incognito Forensic Foundation Going by Lockhart principles that everything leaves a contact, trace evidence, analyzes a crucial links to the perpetrators. In relation to that, our next topic is, have a guess guys! Comment down your thoughts! Yes, I'm waiting! And yes, it's forensic science. What about forensic science? Forensic science involves forensic or forensis in Latin, which means public discussion or debate. Combined with science, it will be methods, processing, and solving crimes. There are branches of forensic sciences such as forensic toxicology, psychology, podiatry, pathology, odontology, linguistics, Geology, Entomology, Engineering, DNA Analysis, Botany, Archaeology, Anthropology, Digital, and Ballistics. Wait, we're not going to discuss it all. Don't you worry, we're going to focus on chemistry first. Forensic chemistry is an application of chemistry to forensic investigation, complex chemical analysis to identify elements and to fab. Identifying based on physical and chemical properties of substances. If there's forensic chemistry, then there's a forensic chemist. Forensic chemist, according to Bijus, a forensic chemist a person who is expected to spend their time and effort to identify, quantify, and evaluate unknown items at a crime scene. Then, give it to a detective who puts together all the information from all different departments and advertently solves the crime. One of the major challenges that forensic chemists dealing with are the samples that mix in dirt. What exactly does forensic chemists do? First, analyze any non-biological materials found at a crime scene. Second, link the suspect to the crime. Third, determine the chemical makeup of the material such as nature and composition. Fourth, perform various types of tests depending on what the material is to find its origin. Fifth, prevent contamination of the sample during the testing. Sixth, document his or her findings in an official report. And lastly, testify about the findings in a court of law. Don't forget to subscribe guys! 
Let's go to the scope and significance of forensic chemistry. First, examination of petroleum products like diesel, petrol, and kerosene. Second, analysis of various narcotics, designer and abuse drugs like bang, opium, ganja, LSD, etc. As well as illicit liquors. Third, determination of alcohol in blood and urine. Fourth, examination of low standard construction material like cement, bricks, etc. Fifth, examination of metal alloys and metal fragments. Sixth, examination of inflammable material in suspected cases of arson, derby deaths, etc. 7. Analysis of explosive, firearms, and ammunition. 8. Analysis of dyes, paints, ink, fillers, binders, and various other chemicals like capsaicin, spray, tear gas. 9. Drug screening of athletes. 10. Drop cases. 11. Analysis of fermented wash, varnish, etc. in prohibition and excise cases. 12. Analysis of pesticides and insecticides. Sick and tired of watching? We're almost done! Just stay there. Techniques by Forensic Chems First, UV visible spectrometry distinguish between samples of proteins and nucleic acid. Second, mass spectrometry, GCMS. GCMS identify and quantitatively analyze the traces of ignitable liquid residue in collected samples. Used in investigations of arsons, poisoning, and explosions. Breaks samples apart and separates the ionized fragments by mass and charge. Third, gas chromatography. Gas chromatography provides a close match of unknown accelerant to unknown source such as gasoline tank or hardware store. Four, thin layer chromatography or PLC. PLC analysis of a different toxins. Analyze inks and dyes. Fifth, high pressure liquid chromatography or HPLC. HPLC separates different types of drugs. Used for non volatile mixtures. Sixth, infrared spectrophotometry identification of organic compounds as bonds between certain atoms readily absorb infrared radiation or IR. Seven, atomic absorption spectrophotometry provides ways of determining absorption and emission spectra. Useful tools in the analysis of metal such as bullet fragments useful in cases of suspected heavy metal poisoning. Eight, nuclear magnetic resonance spectrophotometry or NMR makes use of the fact that nuclei of some molecules absorb radio frequency radiation in strong magnetic fields. Nuclei in certain molecules absorb radiation at characteristic frequencies makes the identification of even tiny or impure samples possible. 9. Neutron Activation Analysis or NAA NMR a beam of neutrons from a nuclear reactor is directed as a sample of test material. The material becomes temporarily radioactive, emitting Y rays that are characteristic of the compositions. Analysis of the Y radiation provides accurate and reproducible determination of the content of the sample. Determination of arsenic in hair of corpse buried for hundreds of years. And that's it! Thank you for watching, mga kabadi! Please don't forget to subscribe and click the notification button for more updates.
and videos. Bye!